Initially, doctors could not explain why this little boy's jaw kept on growing. Finally, when they looked inside of his mouth, they began to comprehend what was happening to Thomas. Emily and Jake gazed at their beautiful baby boy. He looked a lot like his older brother Lucas, except for a little more prominent upper jaw. Other than that, he seemed perfect. It was only when Emily tried to breastfeed him that she noticed that he had some problems keeping in the milk. The nurses assured her that everything was normal, but Emily's motherly instincts alerted her that there was something wrong with her son. She waited patiently for the pediatric doctor to make his rounds the following morning. Even if it was just for her own peace of mind, she would ask him to examine little Thomas's mouth and nose. By this time, she was sure that he struggled with breathing more than he was supposed to. When Dr. Franklin introduced himself to Emily that morning, he didn't seem at all concerned about her baby boy. However, when the mother told him that her son was coughing up most of the milk, he decided to check him out to make sure nothing was wrong. But as he looked into Thomas's mouth, his eyes widened. Without further explanation, he told Emily that he would have to take the baby to his consulting rooms, as he needed some equipment to conduct a thorough examination. Emily consented to the examination, despite the fact that her little boy would have to go alone. Her husband Jake was back home with Lucas and could not accompany their baby. She herself could not get out of the hospital bed yet, as the C-section from birth was still very painful and she was hooked up to IVs. With a heavy heart, she watched as the nurse wrapped her boy in a special blanket and followed the doctor to his office. It felt like hours, but it was actually only 25 minutes later that the doctor appeared in the doorway. He asked her to phone her husband so that they could have a joint discussion. As soon as Jake had arrived, he would share what he had discovered. By this time, Emily was quite tearful. What was wrong with her boy? She had thought that his upper jaw was a little bigger than expected, but now it felt like they were waiting for a death sentence. Jake rushed to her side, both to comfort her and to get clarity on what would be bothering the doctor. When Dr. Franklin finally spoke up, he had a little bit of bad news to share, but also a clear solution at hand. He found a little hole in Thomas's palate. It was not as pronounced as it could have been, and the family was fortunate that the outer lips were fully intact. During the fetal development, the palate had not closed up properly. This was the reason for the minor feeding problems that the child was experiencing. The doctor started educating the parents about the operation that would have to follow, but the procedure could only be done at a later stage, since most of the corrections are usually done between six months and a year after birth. As each child develops in their own way, the right time for the procedure could only be determined as Thomas grew. Of course, it was kind of a huge shock to both Emily and Jake, but they decided to be positive and focus on all the good things they were thankful for. It took some adjustment to establish a successful feeding routine, but in general the family was going okay. They were supposed to go on vacation the following week, but they agreed to postpone it until they were better adapted to the challenges they now faced. After a week in the hospital, the family started life at home. Although Emily initially wanted to ignore the fact, it seemed like little Thomas's upper jaw just kept on growing, and soon enough, she could no longer ignore it. From a side profile perspective, there was a huge discrepancy between the size of the upper and lower jaw. At the two-month follow-up visit to Dr. Franklin, he was in agreement that the family should visit a specialist. Clearly, there was something more significant going on with Thomas's mouth. Although he seemed like a healthy little boy, the parents could not ignore his abnormal features anymore. Family and friends were hesitant to comment, but everybody noticed that the little boy had an ever-growing upper jaw. The appointment with the craniofacial specialist resulted in a strange diagnosis the parents had never heard of in their lives. When the doctors examined Thomas's mouth, they were shocked at what they found on the inside. There was no family history of anything even vaguely resembling what Thomas was diagnosed with. Doctors told Emily and Jake that their son suffered from a condition known as Pierre-Robin sequence. This explained the cleft palate, which was often associated with the condition. As the tongue was a little further back in the mouth, it also explained why Emily suspected that her boy couldn't breathe easily. Initially, it looked like the upper jaw was growing too fast, but now the specialist explained that the lower jaw was underdeveloped, thus making the face look unbalanced. Both the jaws were growing, but at a different pace. The doctor brought in a feeding therapist to give Emily some additional tips on how to prevent milk from going through her baby's nose, as babies with this condition had to be monitored to prevent any chance of suffocation. 
The family would have to manage the situation until little Thomas was old enough to be operated on. Thankfully, in their opinion, he only suffered from a mild form of the sequence. Emily had another question, but she was hesitant to ask. Finally, she told the doctor that when she fed her son, it almost felt as if he was biting her. The doctor then told the parents what he had also discovered during his examination of the little boy. Hidden in the smaller lower jaw, there were two natal teeth. The doctor needed to remove them, as there was no logical reason for them existing since they were of inferior quality and could also hurt the tongue. Another advantage of removing those teeth was to make breastfeeding easier for the mother. It was frightening to hear that the additional problems that were closely associated with this condition were potential heart and eye defects. It was time for their parents to take Thomas for two additional tests. Fortunately, the results of these exams were instantly available. When doctors told Emily and Jake that their baby had a healthy heart and that the anatomy of the eyes also seemed to be correct, they couldn't help but cry. Despite the challenges they were facing, there was also much to be thankful for. Still, both Emily and Jake had to work through a number of intense emotions. They were not emotionally prepared to have a child with any medical problems and yet would do anything in their power to help their little boy. For his sake, they had to be strong and focus on all the positive things in their life. Together as a family, they were ready to face the road ahead. Despite the devastating news the parents received that morning, there was also some potential good news. In some cases, the condition of the jaws growing at different rates corrects itself as the child grows older. Doctors could not promise anything, but in Thomas's case, this seemed highly probable. Although the cleft palate would not correct itself, the family would know in the first year of their son's life if future surgery would be needed to lengthen the lower jaw. The team of craniofacial specialists kept a close eye on Thomas. By the time he was seven months old, they were ready to perform the operation to close up the little opening in his cleft. At that stage of the treatment plan, doctors suggested that Thomas should be allowed to grow normally in the hope that his jaws would largely correct themselves. After the correction of his palate, his appetite increased and he started gaining some weight. His development and growth milestones were right on schedule. When he reached the age of two years, doctors confirmed that it seemed like the family might not have to go through an additional procedure to lengthen the lower jaw, as the balance of his face was correcting itself as time passed. The option of cosmetic surgery would always be available after he reached his teenage years if the family deemed the procedure necessary. But for now, he was healthy as he could be, and his parents could finally breathe a sigh of relief and embark on a new, much happier chapter of their lives. Had you ever heard about the condition known as Pierre Robin sequence prior to watching this video? Have you ever met a child who had to undergo surgery at such a young age? Tell us in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.